to our last step in the uh, Jason McHugh Inside Light Connect speed dating day is with our uh, old friends at 60 Helmets, Bob Weber, uh, who I've worked with previously, actually at a different magazine. But uh, hey, things are going great for you guys. Congratulations with all the success and the momentum that 60 is enjoying. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's been five years we've been in the marketplace already. It, I can't believe how fast that's gone by. Definitely. So, uh, I guess for the fashion fickle, we should show the new stuff. I mean, seriously, look at that helmet. I told Bob that that's the best looking 60 I've ever seen. I got the trendy uh, aquamarine blue color, the titanium, and then flow yellow. Yeah. So. Yeah, so there's three new graphics that we're introducing uh, here in a couple of weeks. The helmets uh, will arrive here shortly. Um, we've got the force graphic that Don just mentioned. We're excited about it too. We love the colorway. It's a real simple, clean graphic, gloss finish, uh, the teal. Uh, uh, paint will match a lot of the uh, gear that's out there uh, right now. Um, we've got a Sonic in the fluorescent yellow. This matches the Sonic red, white, and the orange one. That's been a real successful graphic for us. And then we are also introducing a macro in the titanium uh, colorway with some red accents in the trims and a red mouthpiece. Um, so those will be here for holiday, and uh, they're the new helmets for us to show right now. We've also got the youth helmet in this uh, titanium co uh, color showing up as well. Nice. So we were talking before we started rolling the cameras. Uh, there was a large number of 60 helmets at the mini major. And then in the vet classes that I raised, there's always a lot of vet, vet guys wearing a 60. So it's yeah. the smart people that care about protecting their heads and protecting the heads of their kids uh, that are really buying into the 60 technology. Um, what are the challenges for you about getting everyone around? I think probably the biggest challenge is the is the uh, point of entry, the cost. You know, we're a little bit more expensive than the uh, mass part of the market at, at seven hundred dollars. Um, that's been a challenge for us from day one. Um, it's just part of the equation. We're building two helmets in the mm -hmm. side to make one. Um, I think to offset that, we do offer a rebuild service for our helmets that maybe not everybody's aware of. Um, yeah, we're, we're re rebuilding probably between, I don't know, five and eight helmets a week, it seems, mm -hmm. on a regular basis. But that allows somebody to uh, get some additional life out of their helmet if the shell's okay. Mm -hmm. If the shell's damaged, then we have to retire the helmet, but we have an expect an, an inspection process that we go through. Mm -hmm. And if the helmet checks out, we can put a completely new liner system in it and get the guy going. He's back up and running for a couple hundred bucks and basically as good as new. Cool. So it's a pretty exciting time to be in motocross. I mean, I think these days we're safer than ever. We're also riding bikes that go faster and jump higher and everything, but it's good to see safety equipment taking steps forward as well. So the 60 came out changed the way everyone thought about helmets and addressed the uh, problem of rotational impact brain injuries, correct? So yep. so now we have TLD and Fox have MIPS liners, uh, yep. Thor has a MIPS liner, the Bell has the Flex, Showy just came out with a different technology. Yep. Um, so man, you, one guy, you and Robert over there yep. have, uh, have changed the way everyone thinks about helmets. I mean, it's not often that you change an entire industry that has to feel pretty good when you go to sleep at night to know that you've uh, your efforts and your vision has made our sport a little safer. It does, you know, and and uh, I am. I'm proud of that fact. I knew when we started that we would would inspire the other manufacturers to step up their game, and 